So uh, please welcome uh, uh, Ignacio Gaffo is with us from IE University. Hi, Nacho. Good to have you with us. Hello to everybody. <laughs> Hi, and we have also Walter Beats. Are you with us, Walter? Hello, hello. Yes, I am. Yeah, okay. I, I'm here. I just didn't find the unmute button, but that's okay. I found <laughs> it by now. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. That's perfect. That's perfect. Okay, Vim, the stage is okay. yours, and I leave you with your yeah. panelists. Thank you very much. Uh, we organized the panel as such that uh, in the first round, uh, we will ask uh, also um, Nacho and Walter uh, to uh, to give uh, an, a short introduction on their university and, and what they are doing uh, in the comparable to, to things that I was telling. Um, and then we will continue with uh, a discussion on uh, things that were striking in the three presentations. Uh, so I give the floor first to Nacho, please, uh, to, to uh, start with uh, a story from his university. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Wim, Milena, Lucia, and Walter, everybody, for the invitation today. Very nice to be to be here. Let me share very quickly some some slides from from my side, which I, got, I think are going to make a uh, clearer uh, what we are uh, what we are dealing with uh, at at IE. Let me start with saying that we 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 pretty much share the vision, okay, from that Wim Wim shared, okay, in the sense that uh, things are changing dramatically. Uh, digital is, is is something we we have to uh, to move into, and that's basically also part of our strategy for many many years, right? Uh, very briefly about uh, IE University, IE Business School. Uh, well, we we've been into online for many many years. From our side, it's been close to twenty years, uh, and actually we. We've done strong efforts to incorporate this, not only in terms of technology, it also has to do with pedagogy and, and processes. In our case, I would say we are very strong in, in blended education. What we call blended is a combination of face-to-face -face and, and online. And actually, as you can see, we, we have an outstanding performance in, in, in master rankings like Financial Times, QS, etc. And from our side, we were very strong in, in online. We we had a lot of uh, efforts, processes, pedagogies in, in, in place. And, and the challenge we had before was, well, we had two kind of separated wars, right? <laughs> the face-to-face -face programs and, and what we call the online or, or the blended programs, right? In our case, and I think we're speaking about similar things, okay, and, and, and probably we refer this to as, as blended education in our case, we like calling it a liquid learning. And basically our view with this, and, and you will see a lot of commonalities between what he said and what we are doing is, is we think we have to provide students with a transformational and interactive experience. And, and that's also he mentioned, no, we have to, to make sure we are making that interaction. And that probably means that we have to go beyond the specific methodologies and, and platforms. And that's pretty much the vision that we, we had uh, before coronavirus. And this means we have to blend physical, digital, and if you like natural uh, environments. And the idea is basically to provide, uh, considering the learning outcomes, what's the best learning experience. In our case, uh, this is pretty much the evolution we had in the past. So before Corona, we were speaking about face-to-face -face or methodology, and now what we are moving on to is, is liquid learning. And it's, this is a process, this is something we kicked off last March, but obviously this is, this is work in progress. But if I want to give you a vision, okay, a visual vision about what we are delivering, it, it could be something like, like this, no? So as you can see, we have different kind of what we call learning modes. Okay, so of course you can use discussions. Okay, and for doing this, what we are doing is we are developing a learning assets. So we are leveraging partners. That's something we will move, discuss later, like feedback fruits. Well, we are definitely um, looking for a lot of interaction and this has to do with changing the pedagogy, introducing new tools like here you have two Lego series play or Kahoot. Of course, we want to make things more immersive and probably this has to do with changing the approach. So we are introducing games or simulations and something very critical, especially for new generations. That's something we've seen and we've been fostering has to do with application. So probably this has to do with new methodologies like project-based learning or probably engaging with the real world companies. And the last piece, which I think it's also very important, and we referred to this when we spoke about all the efforts they are doing in terms of digital assets is in, in our case, on top of MOOCs, which we are also developing, we are uh, working out developing what we call learning assets. Learning assets could be a multimedia stuff, a game, simulation, short videos, things that you can use, no? like a Tetris, if you like. We, we are building a lot of them so that uh, professors can pick them up, a kind of library, if you like, of, of digital assets. 
and along the same lines, as, as, as you can see, we like speak about, well, we refer to this as learning spaces. I'm going to take the word, Wim, because I like it very, very much. But as you can see, um, interestingly, we don't speak anymore, anymore about physical classes. I don't think that's going to be happening anymore. So we speak about hybrid classes, as you can see, where people can connect remotely. Of course, we have uh, online synchronous classes. Okay, that's another learning space. We think okay, in our case, we develop something called the wall room. Okay, which is basically something we're leveraging. And then, of course, you can go for other formats like a synchronous online discussion. So we can, uh, whenever we can, write uh, learning. Go ahead with experiential learning, and also what we call a out of class online learning, which has to do probably pretty much with self study. You know how you can complement the, the other stuff. The main thing in the end of the day is we want to blend them because we believe that oh, that's our vision, uh, that uh, in the end of the day, uh, you have to get this to, to provide the best learning experience. And what we have seen is there's been an acceleration of this, you know, so this is something that we were working on for many years. Um, and basically, probably the same for most of you is we are speeding up and we're speeding up this, this transformation, transformation process. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Nacho, for this nice introduction. Uh, I'm happy to see that there is similarities with my story. So um, thank you for that. Uh, we will continue on that uh, later on in the, in, in the panel discussion. But I will first give the floor now to Walter to uh, introduce uh, um, a you. little bit his university. Uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, we're not really a university, so I'm, I'm talking on behalf of Eindhoven Engine, which is a cooperation between the Technical University Eindhoven, University of Applied Sciences, uh, Fontys, or equally in, in the Eindhoven region, and TNO, the Dutch uh, Science Foundation or Scientific Board. I don't know exactly how um, <clears throat> you translate that. Uh, each of those institutes, of course, have their own approaches very much in line with, with what uh, KU Leuven does and Instituto de Empresa does. So, I'm not going to talk about that. Uh, there are fantastic experimentations like in Fontis, they have a complete IT uh, trajectory, which is uh, self-steered and self-organized. So according to, for those of you who know that, CODA in Amsterdam and Nicole 42 in Paris, huh, where they teach uh, programmers uh, by just uh, programming. So there are no courses anymore. So Fontis experiments with us works very well. I'm not going to talk about that. Uh, what the Eindhoven engine is, is, is an animal created between those three, which is officially an innovation accelerator, uh, an innovation ecosystem. And the reason for doing that is since that innovation inside universities is extremely difficult. So the Eindhoven engine sits outside the university. It's still on, on university terrain, but it could be anywhere, right? That, that is sort of by accident. And it follows its own rules. And the idea is, if we would like to give a, a slogan, it is dream big, start small, and scale fast. Uh, so, so dream big, think about what is the impact you can have, uh, then start experimenting, you know, and learn from your experiments and improve your experiments, and then create exponential organizational structures so that things blossom at uh, different places. So what I really would like to say, the, the, one of the main thoughts about, about the engine is we, we radically want to change the pedagogical model. And we really want to start there, right? So it is about how students learn and what they should learn. And, and we believe, and talking about and, and, and a little bit of anecdote, more than 20 years ago, I was asked by the European Union to launch a project which had to be a networked school virtually supported. And that was called the Euro-Arab Management School and it was physically located in Granada, one of the three nicest years of my life, needless to say, to live in Granada and to work in Granada. For the Spaniards, I'm sure you will like this one. <laughs> now, what is really interesting for this meeting is not the Spanish experience, which was great. I still play flamenco guitar, but <laughs> is the fact that the attempt was to create a completely new pedagogical model. It was a network school, so it was a cooperation of schools, and we trained trainers to deliver locally based on an individual curriculum with culturally relevant material in each country of the Euro-Mediterranean region. And God knows what the Euro-Mediterranean region really means. It's a huge diversity. And to support that, co-learning uh, virtually with technology, entirely too early, more than 20 years ago. Now, 
we are still working in the same direction. So we are building an innovation ecosystem that is multidisciplinary by creation, that deals with open innovation, since we think that that is where the learning takes place. And it tries to, to foster co-creation in that famous triple helix. For those of you that don't know, the Eindhoven region is, is very much into mechatronics, and you have the huge uh, players like Philips and ASML, etc. So, so it, it's a region that is highly focused on on mechatronics. Uh, it tries to activate the collective intelligence of all in order to bring innovation from a linear way of thinking, a linear way of education. Hey, what we still do in universities is we, we teach courses. We, we really want to go horizontally and say, if you need a course, find a course, a MOOC or whatever, uh, find your resources on internet. The point is, can you rapidly uh, speed up to bring a prototype to market. And what do you learn by that? By that, And then, only then, you talk about the role of, of technology. And then you go into how does technology support co-working, co-creation, uh, collaboration, you see, in those, uh, those e innovation ecosystems where there is some co-location, where there is a lot of hybrid work. And of course, we suffered from corona, needless to say, like all the others, right? Uh, on those platforms, we still support students and corporates, since the living labs are places where corporates, students, and public service work together to find impactful solutions to real problems. Huh? Now, we support that learning trajectory, which is as much a student learning as a lifelong learning trajectory, with design thinking, systems thinking, but also with a strong focus on personal transformation. It has been said a few times, eh? it, it, it is all around you transforming your thinking. Eh? And, 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 and we, really, we really make that a very visible, active part of that. So we want to support the learning process. We want to support the transformation process. And then we are very keen, and, and that's experimental, but we are very keen on, on the use of semantics and uh, talking about, about artificial intelligence you know, within, within that technology. Semantics, for instance, in order to help students, people curate content. And one of the big issues of, of uh, virtual learning is of course content. And you have all those kinds of content libraries, but if you have to start making your content yourself, it's expensive, it takes long, and by the time it's done, it's out of date. Well, there's a lot of good uh, quality resources available. So how can you curate on demand when you need it that bit of explanation that is going to help you now and immediately through your question. Uh, semantics allows you to, to, I mean, if you're in a discussion with five, six, seven students, managers, people, uh, you, have, you have lots of text and lots of ideas to get the essence out of those ideas. Uh, it's semantics is, of course, made for that. And last but not least, there has been said a lot uh, by my two colleagues around grading and, and assessment, etc. Semantics might be degrading 2.0, uh, certainly for all what is uh, written assignments. So we, we sort of start from a slightly different point of view. And then, of course, eventually we're going to see how uh, technology can help us. And, and the reason we do that, and there I finish, the reason we do that is we do believe that we are, we really need to innovate our pedagogical process. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> okay, thank you, Walter. Um, that's indeed a, a, a rather a different perspective uh, to start from. Um, but I think that there are some similarities with the story that Nacho and I were telling for a more traditional university uh, as, as well. Um, and that brings us actually to, to, to my uh, question that we would like to, to, to put on the table. Uh, and that is, um, can we identify in one or another way um, in the three stories uh, success factors uh, for, uh, yeah, showing that that, uh, that that what we are trying to do in our universities uh, or close to universities in your case Walter uh, that that yeah things that that are let's say driving forces uh, but in the in the right direction uh, the, the things that are helping us to 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 do the implementations in a successful way uh, is that possible and natural to, to comment for you first on uh, hearing the story from Leuven, knowing your own story and hearing Walter's story, uh, what, what could you identify as uh, real success factors? 
when it comes to uh, these uh, technology uh, uh, aspects in education. Uh, yeah, let me <laughs> let me step in then. So I yeah. I, th I think we have we have com commented on quite a few things that I think are very relevant. The first thing I think we we, we cannot forget is and the three of us actually mentioned it is uh, technology is a tool. <laughs> Is, is not an end in itself. Yeah. You know? So the first thing is, is to get the basics first. And basics first has to do uh, with being clear about the vision, being clear about the kind of learning experience you want to attain, uh, and basically yeah. the learning outcomes. That should be the very, very first thing. Okay, so that would be yeah. the, my first point. The, yeah. the, the second thing I think that we, the, the three of us mentioned, okay, uh, not explicitly, but uh, we, we spoke about that. This, this is not a pedagogical initiative. <laughs> or a technological yeah. initiative. This is a university initiative. Okay, so we need top management uh, on board. Okay, and this has to be uh, fully aligned with uh, the university strategy. If not, this is not gonna work. And third yeah. thing that I, th I think we mentioned is, 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 is this is a kind of MVP approach in the sense that Walter mentioned, you know, he kicked off the project 20 years ago. You also spoke about an ongoing process, same here. So it's not possible to get everything perfect from day one. No? So probably what we have to do is we have to keep on learning no? and experimenting and assessing if this is working or not. And the last piece I would like to mention is, I think it's absolutely essential to leverage a new trends, no? educational trends, generational trends, uh, work, uh, work changes, you know, those are the four things I would mention. No? Okay, okay. Perfect, thank you. Uh, we can comment, uh, I, I, I can comment on them uh, later, but I will first uh, ask uh, Walter the same question. If you have to identify success factors um, based on what you heard and what you know about your own situation, what would you put forward? Uh, yeah, well, the few I want to mention is one that the, the quality of the technology, right? the, the, the quality of the technology has to be good. We, we struggle on a daily basis with still too much simple things. And, and I think we shouldn't ignore that. And, and, and not that we have maybe the solutions, but that's an important one. Secondly, is the availability of digital resources. Uh, and again, there is a lot available but I think for the learning process, if we want to put the learning responsibility with the learner, it is important that we have those resources easily accessible. Um, the discussion whether these kinds of innovations can take place inside the university structure or not, and whether they do not need to be, at least for the experimentation phase, to be put somewhere halfway between or even completely out. Uh, the discussion we touched on, thanks to Corona, due to Corona, is, is what will be the future of working, remote working? Uh, what, mm -hmm. what, what will be the practice of how companies, organizations will work after Corona? Is this going to continue to be hybrid, physical, virtual, whatever? And then the big thing is, is that I think we should really seriously pay attention to to the innovation of the learning process so go away from the from the teaching concept which is still behind a lot of what we are doing even if we improve it hey, and, and even if we make it more flexible and whatever the basic model is still a teaching model and i think we critically need to think about the learning model and then use technology to support that learning model and i think by the way that technology is much better to support that learning uh, perspective instead of that teaching perspective. That are for me the, the, the few yeah. lessons or items I see that are important. Okay, thank you. Uh, well, and uh, the ones that I think uh, are important uh, and that I would like to, uh, to, to add here is that, uh, and it's in line with what uh, you, Walter, and, and also you, Nacho, said, uh, and that is, um, Remember the slogan, uh, stay human. Uh, I think yep. that uh, the, the, um, yeah, the focus on the people uh, in, in the, the, the whole learning experience uh, process, uh, that is important. Uh, and the student is the first actor in there. Uh, so um, the student-centered approach, uh, always trying to think in terms of what does the student needs. Uh, that is uh, an important success factor if, if, for me, at least, if you start from there. Uh, it has to do with an innovative learning process, yes, uh, uh, but, but the, 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 yeah, it, it's a human being, that student. Uh, and we also need to know more about uh, the, the, let's say, 
the current generation of students. Uh, I know uh, my colleagues from pedagogical sciences, uh, they, they sometimes uh, disagree with me, but, but um, the current student is different from uh, when I was a student or, or even when uh, we compare them with students from let's say 10, 15 years ago. Um, and so we need to realize that uh, and we need to know more about that person, that generation of students. Uh, especially because technology is so much part of their daily life uh, um, and they expect that the technology is also there where they have to learn uh, at the university. Uh, and so we need to know more uh, to, to, to have a better feeling of uh, what these students uh, really uh, want us to do in, uh, or what they want to do uh, in, in, in their learning experience, so to say. Uh, so that is certainly one aspect, uh, one success factor. If you could put that student more in the, in, in, in the center of all your uh, endeavors, let's say. Uh, but there is the other human being uh, involved, and that is the teacher. Uh, so we also need to focus uh, on the teachers and, and, and help the teachers so that they can indeed better help the student uh, with, with the technology. Uh, and that boils then down to, to, to what I mentioned in my talk, uh, that is the, the Leuven Learning Lab, uh, where we have a, a networked organization spread all over the university uh, with support from the general management. And then I'm coming back to what uh, I think it was Nacho who said that the, the top management has a strategy, has a vision uh, on that, uh, and they are really implementing it. Uh, they are supporting it. Uh, they are providing the money uh, from uh, from the university budgets uh, to to uh, yeah to have more people in the level learning lab, uh, to have the the more investments in learning spaces and so on. Uh, but but the 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 the, the top management is also helping us to 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 make that first line support support very close to the teachers um, and the support for the teachers in my eyes uh, is a second uh, important uh, success factor and then i like what you said walter uh, the, the 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 thing and it's also true in in, in our university I, I hope i made it uh, made my notes correctly uh, dream big start small and scale up fast uh, yes. i think that this is also an, uh, an uh, a good adagio let's say um, the you, you dream big means that you need a vision uh, and that you need to, 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 to also think out of the box at a certain point, uh, but then become realistic and, and, and start small with, with seed projects in our case, for instance, uh, and do small things, uh, experiment, uh, stimulate innovation, uh, let uh, yeah, new things uh, come up uh, here and there in the university, and then which is sometimes lacking in, 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 in what I see in, in, in other universities or in other circumstances in general, uh, when you have nice project outcomes, let's say, uh, pick those nice things and try to scale it up uh, for the better of the, the whole organization. Uh, and I think that the, 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 the way that we do it with our seed projects at the one hand and scale projects at the other hand, that this is also helping us uh, to do well to be successful in the transformation um okay i don't know uh nacho you were the first one uh do, do, did you hear now things that you would like to comment on um, i think you touched on, on something which is very very important no? which is basically we have to go beyond the university borders no? to, to to experiment to grow and and, and to innovate uh, and i think that's going to become a, a mainstream or it's going to be something uh, we we definitely have i really like walter what you mentioned you know about collaborating with not only with companies which i think is, is something quite a few um, universities are doing but also collaborating with the government no public institutions no and, and i think more and more uh, universities are going to become ecosystems no i think we've been a bit endogamic <laughs> if, yeah. if if i may between ourselves no so when we speak about collaboration we speak about collaborating with uh, with other universities but they really liked uh, what he said walter said and i think that's that's a way to go no we, we are yeah. going to be transforming ourselves you're going to become a ecosystems platforms you pick up the, the word you like no mm -hmm. i think it's it's a must have no yeah okay i i I, def I definitely support that when i was still the dean at the business school in the university of cape town i always say that in the future of a business school will be to become an innovation ecosystem 
you see, and, and I think we are moving fortunately and rap rather rapidly in that direction. Yeah, but I absolutely agree that that's my view too, you know, that idea of innovation ecosystems. Mm -hmm. um, maybe just because I'm curious, Walter, uh, if, if, if you talk, and I, I also like the idea of, of collaboration uh, and, and you mentioned co-creation as well, I think, yeah. Uh, yep. the, um, would it be possible to give us an example of uh, uh, something that, that, yeah, that happened concretely and, and, and that we could maybe also uh, translate uh, or transform to our oh, situations? Yes. Uh, oh, no, sure, sure, sure. Uh, we, we, we are piloting for the time being with five uh, living labs, as we call them, small and bigger ones. And and the bigger ones, uh, and that's for the University of Applied Science, by the way, the bigger ones is to replace internships, since with Corona, it's extremely difficult to, to find internships. And the idea is that, that in a living lab, teachers, teachers slash researchers, eh? teachers, mm -hmm. students, and corporates work together on an innovation project for that company. But the corporates go create. <clears throat> So the corporates don't throw the problem over the fence and then the students work and they throw it back over the fence and nothing happens. So they really are together only one day a week for Corona reasons and the rest is virtual, but they are together and create together. And the feedback we get, it's only now in the third or fourth month of the pilot, particularly for those companies is saying, hey, we get brilliant ideas, which we could not have imagined to get. And the students, they say things like, finally, it matters what we do. Oh, yeah. this is interesting. We can, we can finally create something. We can finally do something. Now, and the last one that I want to give as, as a real lesson, which, which was very surprising for most, not for me, is that teachers say, damn, our students can do much more than we think. You know, we limit them in, in what they could do. And, and if, I want to if I want to frame one, that's the one I want to frame. We limit our students to, to learn. Mm -hmm. But so we, we work with those five pilots. The one I refer to is roughly 40 students and more or less five or six companies. The other ones are teams of five working with one company and we have one pilot where they have uh, again 30 students working with seven companies okay. right and 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 all co companies and uh, ngos yeah, so yeah, it's, yeah. It, it's within the frame of business and society so it, it's impact and and finding solutions for big societal issues etc okay mm -hmm. okay that's an interesting concept. And, and by the way, sorry, sorry. Yeah, sure. uh, and no, by no, the way, they, they, no, no. By the way, they give credits, huh? so so yeah, yeah. Uh, so they can be used for any standard formal program. Yeah. Huh? And, yeah. And 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 one of the ways ahead, and then I finish. One of the ways ahead is that we would create such a living lab, again as an entity on the border of the university where companies, public service and students can come for learning, for finding solutions, for making credits, five credits, 10 credits, 20 credits, and you base their engagement on a learning contract. You ask the student, what are you coming for? What do you want to learn? And the evaluation, by the way, then is the realization of that learning contract. Yeah. And, and then I finish. Yeah. Okay, that's a nice example. Um, the, the the question I have in the uh, you you mentioned it uh, at a certain point is that uh, okay due to Corona it's no longer possible for students to to meet there just one day in the week. Did did, did mm -hmm. I? Yes, yes, correctly. Correct, correct. Yeah, and and how how is it then transformed into a virtual, let's say, living lab? Uh, using using all the platforms as as you described them as as Nacho described okay. them. I mean, using the Teams and and the Zooms and the and the whatever. And if if we really want to go further, and we would choose to be less physical. And, mm -hmm. and more virtual, which is a matter of choice, since of course, in this case, in an innovation ecosystem, you want to be partly physical in order to create that un, unorganized meeting eh, of ideas. Mm -hmm. That's what you want, that famous coffee machine yeah. idea. Eh? We meet at the yeah. coffee, oh, you're working on that. That's interesting. Yeah. So we will have to support that better. We've done that. I've done that in other places. Now I don't talk about about Eindhoven, but I've done that before in France, where where we really have developed a complete platform in order to allow continuous co-working in parallel with uh, physical sessions. But I have to be honest, that is not within within the frame of of Eindhoven. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Nice. 
you would like to comment on that, Nacho, or? Uh... Yeah, I would like to send a message, <laughs> Let me uh, win, sure. if, 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 okay. I, if I may. No, and I think it's yeah. everything which is happening. I, I, I think it's going to be very, very good for the universities <laughs> in, in, the, in the sense that um, I think that if we don't innovate, we are going to be disrupted. You know? mm -hmm. If you think about that, we, we are somehow assuming you know, that universities are going to stay forever. And I'm not so sure about that, no, because what we are, what we are saying potentially could be done directly by companies. No, Google, for instance, just announced, you know, that they were doing or launching some courses. So what's stopping Google from identifying people with very high IQ mm -hmm. that have 17, 18 years old, and offering yep. them the training? It's just an example. Yep. So my point is. In the end of the day, what we are dealing with is very structural changes, okay, and, 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 and COVID is just accelerating them. Now, it's not only about uh, new generations, and I know we speak about millennials, so we speak about generation set. Well, that's for real, mm -hmm. and, and that's definitely changing things upside down because people learn in a very, very different way. And actually mm -hmm. what's going to happen is also technology is going to disrupt everything, not only because of a remote working, which is going to yeah. stay, mm -hmm. but also the kind of jobs that are going to be demanded now. So mm -hmm. if you think about that, what we are speaking about to a large extent is the ability of training people in the right competencies, right? Mm -hmm. Rather than providing them with knowledge. We want them to be yep. able to collaborate. We want them to understand problems. We want them to do some searching, to do experimentation. And, and that's probably the main things that, that we should do. No, That's where we can really add value. Let me put it in a different way. If we want just to transmit knowledge, I think Coursera is going to do a pretty good job. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it's, it's a question yes. of time till we have, I don't know, Harvard or Yale offering every single knowledge available online. And we're going to be disrupted. So in the end of the day, my vision is, Everything we are commenting, I think it's going to be very beneficial. I think it's going to be painful. It's not going to be an easy move. And mm -hmm. we are struggling with, with that. But mid long term, I think it's very, very beneficial for, for all yeah. of us. No? Mm -hmm. I, I think I, I'm, I'm with you on that one. Uh, and uh, yeah, um, I, I come back to my, my, my point, and that is that uh, we need to know more about, uh, well, to, to do it properly. Uh, we need to do more about the current generation of students in the university and how they will evolve over the, let's say, five, ten coming years. Uh, these new generations uh, are, yeah, totally different from, from previous generations. Uh, they are, well, let's say, born with Google and smartphones uh, and, and they they. they They cannot imagine a world without, uh, I think. Uh, and so uh, we have a huge responsibility as a higher education institute uh, to accommodate the, the learning of these students uh, in a way that they are used to it. Uh, I was surprised uh, in, uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, uh, the, to, to, to learn that the students in, in, in our universities nowadays, um, they, they don't read newspapers. Uh, they are not watching uh, the television news, uh, certainly not to an extent that I'm still doing it, uh, but they, they get their information uh, from social media. They get their information from what they call influencers. Uh, they, uh, they, they, yeah, they are living in, in, in a, let's say, a, a world which is, for me as a teacher, Uh, hard to understand sometimes, uh, but we need to, pro to provide these students, the current generation of students, with the competences, the skills, uh, the, 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 the attitudes, uh, which are necessary in the world in which they will work when they graduate from our institutions. Uh, and that is, for me, the, the, the <laughs> let's say, the most difficult uh, thing uh, to do. Uh, and I think that because uh, my, my, my research subject is learning technologies in engineering education, uh, so I think that I'm, I'm, I'm still, yeah, <laughs> uh, quite close to the newest developments there. Uh, but each time the students are surprising me and each time I'm asking myself the question, how long will I be able to cope with that uh, situation? Uh, I don't know what, what your feelings are about this. Uh, Can I make a little remark on, on that sure. one? It was yeah. also part of a question somewhere in, in, in the chat. Mm -hmm. Is We are still training for jobs of, of which we know that in five or 10 year time, 
they don't exist anymore. And yeah. nobody is able to define today the jobs that will exist. There will be jobs. I'm, I'm not pessimistic at all no. about that, but they definitely will need different competencies. So I think that a huge big competence that we have to give students is the capacity to learn to learn and to mm -hmm. continuously continue to learning since so that they can reinvent themselves almost yeah. every year if you want to, when yeah. new opportunities come by. Yeah. And I think that is yeah. a, a difficult one for universities. Huh? And mm -hmm. that's a much easier one for those what I call entities, companies, flexible organizations mm -hmm. that indeed are going to, to compete, particularly on the development of those flexibility competencies. Yeah, yeah. It reminds me of what, what is uh, sometimes called as uh, digital literacy uh, mm. and, and, and uh, feel uh, comfortable enough in that digital world uh, to, to find the tools, to find the resources. Uh, like you mentioned at a certain point, uh, when you need a course, then look for it and, 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 and take the course. Uh, I think that that is indeed a sort of attitude uh, that, that, that we should also, uh, uh, yeah, um, teach to our students, let's say. Um, but having said that, I, I, I think as a teacher, uh, we also need to, to, to be flexible and agile uh, enough in that world so that we could indeed help the students in that uh, new learning experience, so to say. Um, and that is where then the university needs to, 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 to uh, yeah, set up proper training programs uh, and, and give us the, the, the right support, I think. Uh, so from a managerial point of view of the university, we need to, first of all, help the students, uh, but also think about the teachers in that process. Uh, mm -hmm. If, if, if I may, when we have sure, a comment. Yeah. From, sure, from sure, Peter, yeah, that's, which, the, which, that's which, the purpose of a panel discussion. Which, so. which I, I, I would like to comment on. And, and Peter is speaking about the T-shaped approach, you know, and I think it's it's a very nice way of, of describing it. Yeah. And, 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 and you're right, no, Peter, I think um, there's a lot of research or indications that every five years, probably you're going to need to renew yourself. No, it doesn't matter if you're an expert on something very edgy every five years probably you need to re-specialize yourself no so mm -hmm. uh, and that connects with the t-shape no what we have to provide the university probably are two things okay first thing is the basis not the competencies uh, what you refer to walter as learning to learn i think mm -hmm. that's a nice way of, of, of putting it but probably this also connects with what we spoke about um lifelong learning no so probably now we yeah. think about long degrees very structured etc uh, more and more we hear about a uh, micro credentials <laughs> Okay, yep. and, and, and that's another way of putting, okay, if I need to re-specialize, okay, and I need to take a course by myself or take a course in different formats, how it's going to work. So mm -hmm. probably it's, it's not only about uh, what we are going to train on, it's also about the sort of programs we are delivering. No? So probably yep. I, I think we need to evolve that one, no? just yep. going beyond traditional formal uh, degrees no i, I yep. think we also have to to connect with that no yeah there, there is a lot to do nowadays about uh micro credentials for instance uh, and and that also comes close in that direction i think um oh. i'm I'm just looking at the time now. Uh, I think that there is a lot of questions in the chat uh, that, that we might maybe address uh, for the remaining time uh, before we end with uh, uh, an, uh, um, yeah, a main message that each of us would like to bring to the audience. Uh, but Milena, uh, did you manage to, uh, to, to look in the chat and help us in guiding us through the questions a little bit? Uh, yes, yes. I'm looking at the chat all the time and I must say that there are uh really good conversations happening in parallel <laughs> okay yeah I, I focused on the talk with my colleague so uh, <laughs> my apologies uh, i didn't do that uh, no no that's but... great that's great because uh, I, I mean we can we can be that, that's that's what's brilliant about this kind of um, events that we do online right now that mm -hmm. first of all we can record it and get back to it you can have one conversation that we are listening to and then at the same time discussing something without, without interrupting you so that's okay. great Okay. Well, one of, one of the things, um, uh, Johanna here, she mentioned um, how they are in Finland collaborating in, uh, with companies and universities. Um, and uh, Johanna, uh, are you here? Are you with us? Yeah, she is. I'm here. She is. You're here. Would you, would you mind saying a few words about it? Because that's, I think it, it really matches with the, with the examples that, um, that well, all our three panelists were talking about. So would you mind uh, giving us maybe 30 seconds, one minute overview of, of uh, how you do it in Finland? 
Uh, do you mean the co-creation in schools project or? Yeah. Okay, so uh, our university has been involved in this uh, three-year project. We're just uh, actually about to finish the project and we've had about uh, 250 companies uh, work together with Finnish schools. So all of the five largest cities in Finland were, were in uh, as partners in this uh, um, project. And the, basically the idea was that um, we, uh, we universities and the cities worked as coordinators and we helped the companies, These they were ed tech companies or mostly companies that have um, products that are related to learning. So the companies came to us and said that we have this project where uh, we have this product, uh, where could we go and test our product and uh, develop it together with the end users. And then we helped them to find a um, suitable school and a teacher they could work with. And um, it usually took about maybe three months to, to work in the school. Of course, the companies weren't there all the time. They were there maybe uh, two or three times during that, that time, but they were still in contact with the, with the students and the teachers. And um, yeah, that's, that's what we did. And we got really good feedback from it. So uh, I think Milena shared um, the case study about about that project uh, in the chat. So if you want to check out, you can go in and read mm -hmm. that um, article we wrote. Okay. So that's something we've been working um, for the okay. past three years. And I think it's quite unique. Uh, it's, it hasn't been done that much, yeah. basically, because the schools have been kind of closed and um, it's very hard for the companies to enter. Mm -hmm. entered the schools but it's it's changing in Finland and now everyone is seeing the benefits um, okay. of co-creating these kinds of products together with with the end users okay and, and, and can I just ask a question then Joanna uh, the um, it, you have now nice results of this project uh, mm -hmm. the is there any uh, perspective on a continuation afterwards uh, Yes, uh, at least uh, some of the cities are continuing this. So, for example, the city of Helsinki, uh, they are now, they have this, um, I don't know what's it called. I think it's called EduHub or something that mm -hmm. they are okay. now now starting just because okay. of this project. And uh, I think yeah. they are planning to continue this okay. time activities yeah. after the project as well yeah. and, and some some other cities as well in yeah. and for us we are definitely in our university including these kinds of co-creation activities in many of our r d projects that we are mm -hmm. applying or or actually yeah. really working on it's a very it's nice helping. example of, yeah, of uh, yeah, where you work together, uh, universities, companies, uh, cities, uh, and mm -hmm. schools. Uh, so in that respect, it's a, it, it's a good example, similar to what Walter was describing uh, with uh, his uh, uh, living labs. Uh, thank you for sharing that with us. Uh, okay. Milena, yeah, that, are there that, other that was, questions that I, I thought that that would fit? So sorry, sorry for not <laughs> yeah. asking a no, question. No, 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 no. I, I, think, you, Johanna. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, but that's fine. I think that's the uh, that's a good complement to what we said. So uh, great, thank you. So one of the questions uh, that I, I think would fit uh, with uh, with every everyone here is how do you translate skills in edge in digital world? It's an interesting one from Maxim. Okay, and Maxim is still there. Yeah. Okay, Maxim, maybe you could give a little bit background to that question, uh, uh, or what? What do you really want us to to address with that? Uh... Yes. Uh, so uh, thank you for your presentations. Um, my question was about um, what do you need to to do in the universities um, to. Uh, to keep the quality uh, on the skills, because as okay. it was said before and uh, also in the chat, uh, we need to learn to learn and to teach to teach. Um, and 
to build the curriculum uh, through the skills. Mm -hmm. uh, and most of the time, because I am both student and entrepreneur, I explain to my clients that before uh, doing digitalization, uh, digital learning, they need to be uh, really clear about which skills they are preparing for the students. Yeah, okay. I, I think, Nacho, you mentioned quite a few things that, that uh, could, could help to, to, to train students with skills, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe you could elaborate or give an example. Uh, yeah, let me let me let me start with the question, and Maxime. It, it's an excellent question. <laughs> okay, and actually, um, and probably we have to dis distinguish between two things. You no, know, if if I may, you no, know, which is technical skills and 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 soft skills, which is not <laughs> is not the same, obviously. You no, know? and and from our experience, technical skills. If you want to move technical skills into an online environment. Uh, I mean, that's a no-brainer. I mean, that's something you can definitely do. I'm not saying it's something you can do in two seconds, but it definitely, I think we have a lot of evidence that you can do it and you can do it very, very well. Um, and how you can do it? Well, I think you have to be very clear about the learning outcomes and then how you're going to make the assessment. What we struggle a bit more, okay, is, 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 is probably with the soft skills, okay? And, and that, that's, someone, that's something which is not, uh, which is not that easy. Uh, from our experience, Dom, <laughs> uh, Maxime, I have to say that we are we were very surprised no, with, with the results we got because we were forced. I don't know, if, if I speak about moving marketing to online, from my own experience, I can, I can tell you it works very well and actually can even work better in online than face to face. <laughs> but if I have to speak about, I don't know, negotiation skills, <laughs> that's a different story, right? How, how do you do it? And actually it was, I don't know if the word is skeptical, but it was a bit scared <laughs> when, when we had to do that in, in, in last March. In our case, we were forced to do it. Um, and what we, we, we realized is that the learning outcome was very, very good. <laughs> You know, surprisingly, it, it really took my attention. And probably this has to do with how we approach things. And I think that new generations are definitely viewing things in, in a different way. So if I pick up negotiation, I pick up, I don't know, communication skills. The good thing you have with digital media is you, you can personalize much more. For instance, communication skills, something we realize is you can record every single student and you can check the performance of every student and you can share that with, with the student. And the student is not only going to learn during the class, it's going to learn after the class, no? because he's going to review the recording, etc. The key thing, I think, is first, you need to be very clear about what you want to attain. Second thing, you have to look for the right learning assessment. <laughs> you know, in this case, for instance, if I pick up the communication skill could be, look, we are going to compare the quality of the student presenting before and after, <laughs> you know, and, and again, thanks to digital media, you're going to be able to come up with a very, very accurate assessment, no? Mm -hmm. So as I said, this is not perfect and this is probably a work in progress and, 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 and we have to learn on the go. Uh, something yep. we do in mm -hmm. general that could help is we are try, we try to be very specific about the learning outcomes, no? beyond the technical knowledge, the four things you may need to learn from a course. We also try to identify even for technical courses, other pieces. No? So even if we are teaching data analytics, you know, that could contribute, for instance, to analytical thinking. So I think you have to make that exercise and then think carefully about how you're going to make the assessment. Can, okay. I, can I add something to that? Since sure. I, yeah, I, yeah, really, yeah, well, I really honestly think you can't teach competencies. I cannot teach you to become a soccer player. If you want to, I can teach you the rules of the game, but that doesn't make you a soccer player. If you want to become a soccer player, you have to exercise it, right? I can't mm -hmm. teach you to become a musician. I can teach you music. You don't become a musician. You become a musician by exercising it, by playing your instrument. So I think if we want to develop competencies, which I guess we roughly agree that this is what we have to move towards, then you also move towards exercising and practicing things and then have a huge supported exercise of introspection on the experience of that exercising. And I think that's where you touch onto competencies. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And coming back to, to the technology, I think that uh, in, uh, sometimes technology enables possible things that you were not uh, mm -hmm. so, yeah, 
which were not possible without the technology. Um, I'm teaching a course on intercultural competences for engineers, uh, and one of the students is uh, here also participating in the in the, in the room, uh, and that is something that that in the course uh, students from Leuven. Uh, but there is also international students there are working together with students in Penn State University uh, in yep. the US. Uh, and that is an, a, a, a way of, of, of yeah, th that was not possible to teach in the past uh, without the technology. Uh, but here in this particular case, thanks to the technology, I can give the students an intercultural uh, experience, so yep. to say, in a virtual environment, thanks to the technology, uh, where they can exercise what Walter says is important, uh, where they can exercise their intercultural competences. Uh, so I think, yeah, uh, sometimes uh, I, I say the sky is the limit. And as a teacher, uh, you should try to find uh, and to use your imagination. Uh, that's also related to the dream big uh, of, of what Walter said. Uh, mm -hmm. Use your imagination and try to, to, to just come up with a solution. It, it boils also down to what Milena said. As an engineer, I yeah, I do not see that as a problem. Uh, I see that as a challenge, and I like to find a solution for it. Uh, hmm. yeah. let, me, okay. let, me add, let me add something, Wim, on, on what we sure. are saying, which yeah. I think it's important. Yeah. No, sure. also I think we have to, on top of learning to learn, I think we have to learn to unlearn. Yeah, <laughs> I mean to forget to learn what we have, and I think we have a lot of. Uh, and this probably has to do with our own education, how we've grown up, etc. You know, but we we make many many assumptions, no? And that's something mm -hmm. I, I I believe. Oh, that's our experience here at IE. Uh, mm -hmm. We are making many of them, <laughs> you know. And, yeah. and Walter said, for instance, something I like, which is we make a lot of assumptions, no, about the limitations of our students. And mm -hmm. and that's also something, no. I think we have to be a bit more humble in, in the mm -hmm. sense that we don't learn everything, even if we are in the learning, uh, in the learning yeah. world, we don't know everything about learning. Yeah. Uh, and probably we have to to go back to basics, no, and, and question quite a few things we take we take for granted, no. Yeah. Okay, it's twelve o'clock, Milena. Uh, twelve o'clock. That, yes, I, that's uh, the I end mean, of it, the of it, the session, wasn't it? Uh, it is the end of the session. I I would yeah. like just to close with one last question, and and maybe you sure. can uh, give yeah. uh, give quick answers to it. Yeah. Um, the question is, uh, staying a little bit in the uh, futuristic uh, mindset and uh, trying to guess what comes next, uh, which new jobs are emerging in university because of this new area of digitalization? So, yes, yeah, staying with the, with the topic of, uh, of being yeah. a bit not the skills and, and everything um, that students need to learn. What is the role yeah. of the university? You, you mean uh, new jobs in the university or the new jobs for our students? Uh, New jobs in the university. Yeah, yeah, okay, good, yeah. Um, I, I, I have an answer in mind, but I, I'm, I'm looking at uh, Nacho or Walter to go first. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm happy to go first. I think that, uh, that the message would be we should all become co-learners, uh, teachers, researchers, students, uh, corporates, whatever. And we, we create a learning experience within an innovation ecosystem. And mm -hmm. that, that's how for me the university will look like in the future. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let me add two two more from my side. <laughs> Something there is a search today is for learning designers. Clearly, you know, so people mm. that are experts in 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 converting if you like learning outcomes into to pedagogy or can help professors to to do that. I think there is a search, a clear demand, very very strong demand mm -hmm. throughout the entire world. And something we've noticing, okay, and this might be uh, counterintuitive, <laughs> is uh, we have to rethink about the value of campus, no, of real life experiences. <laughs> okay, so I think something which is very became very very critical, at least in our side, is everything which is non-curricular activities. <laughs> and I think there's a lot of value we can provide there. So uh, everybody, all jobs connected to community building or building life around. <laughs> curriculum, if you like, I think that's going to be a very, very interesting job in the future. We will see more and more. Yeah. Okay. Um, now I cannot answer the question anymore because it has already <laughs> been. <laughs> but, but no, uh, I, I think that uh, indeed one, one of the new jobs that I, or, or newer jobs that I think uh, that are becoming more and more important in universities is what, what, what we call instructional designers uh, that are 
people that are, are able to understand uh, at the one hand uh, what is the the, the 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 contents what is the course uh, about uh, what is the topic what is the subject uh, and, and and that are familiar with it or are familiar enough with with that content uh, and at the other hand also know enough about uh, didactics uh, on on how to bring that content in in uh, in such a way that it increases the learning experience of the students uh, so the didact who is able also to think in, in in didactical terms and who can speak the pedagogical vocabulary so to say um, and is at the at the, at the third uh, play in the third place also knowledgeable about the tools the the the, the it uh, or, or uh, equipment devices uh, infrastructure uh, that is also needed uh, to to bring that content uh, in a, uh, in in such a way that the the, the learning experience of the student is increased. Uh, so just to to make that happen into one person uh, who is yeah expert in these three domains uh, that's uh, um, a, a very difficult one i think uh, but it will be needed uh, more and more in the future uh, i'm not saying that you need all these expertise in the same amount uh, at the same level so to say um, but uh, someone who can at least feel or who feels comfortable in that triangle of, of, of different topics. Uh, that for me is important. Uh, but I also like what Nacho said about uh, someone who is also able to make the bridge the, to, to, to make the bridge between the university and society uh, and, and, and what is and the community, what is happening outside the university. Uh, and uh, yeah, to, to, uh, yeah, to open up the world uh, for you as a teacher, not just in the university uh, and also for the students uh, to bring in the, the, the real world, let's say, uh, into the, the, the learning experience. Uh, someone who yeah, feels that, who, who can bring that touch uh, into education, into teaching and learning, uh, I think that this is also important. Uh, Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you to all of you. Yeah, I think uh, that was uh, the end of this session. Um, I yes. have to say that uh, it was a pleasure uh, to, to first present my university, of course, uh, but also to talk with uh, my colleagues, Walter and Nacho, about this important topic. Uh, I hope we brought some messages. Uh, we didn't conclude with one general message, uh, <laughs> but I leave it up to you uh, to, to pick up uh, what, what you think that is important and that you would like to take away as a message uh, back to your own university. And uh, we continue this afternoon.